each person might ask a different question. I haven't thought about Louise Bird in quite a while. You know, yeah. she had the, she had a local card shop, a family card shop. So she must have seen, you know, kind of not like her son in you, but she had a son and a daughter, obviously, Wendy, yeah. that you knew. She uh, was, I mean, like, honestly, she, I, I will never forget it. I, I literally kept amazing. her business card with me okay. through college. Who, who should I, I'm going to do a tribute episode to Louise. Who do you think I should get to do it? I was thinking about getting Bob Richardson. Maybe, yeah. Worked with her really closely. But anybody else that you think would be uh, somebody that knew Louise better than the others that could really speak to how amazing she was? I, you know, I don't, I didn't, once I got there, I didn't really work in the sales area. No, so I, know, I, I know, I know. Maybe Pepper. I don't know if Pepper worked with her. I don't. Well, they worked, you know, not, well, they were more peers, I guess. I mean, they were working in different parts of the company. But Louise was, when Louise was doing the show circuit, she was, yeah. I mean, there was nobody she met with that she didn't turn from being a hostile to a friend. <laughs> within, you, know awesome. what her, you know what her secret was? She did rope dope Really? Yeah. She let him punch on her and punch on her and punch on her verbally. And when they were played out, she'd go in and, 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 yeah. and knock him out with kindness. Yeah, she was great, man. I, I You know, I, like I say, I wouldn't be yeah. here. Well, that's what nice affirmation. Yeah, no, that's cool. No, because I mean, like, to be to be honest with you, I, I don't, you know, I never really even thought about Beckett. I really didn't. I mean, I thought it was no way I would ever have a chance to work there. But then when she came in and handed me her business card and I saw the address and yeah. was like, that's right down the road. It became more of a reality that I could possibly work there because it was close. I, I mean, I don't know. I just in my head never thought that it was right there. Could you have left your dad and your sister? I mean, or was the shop playing out by then? No, it was, it, by the time I was done with college, it was done. I yeah, they were there. It while I was in college. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, you were available at that point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I actually, I mean, the, the story goes that, you know, about 98 is when, that's when I started, or 98, 99, Medicare had, had gone through some changes, and there were no jobs available at all. Like oh, the occupational the therapy? Yeah, yeah. And so I just kind of was like, I was sending out resumes and everything like that. And then I was like, you know, I still had the card and everything. And I was like, well, let me just send my resume to y'all and, and just see. But, you know, I mean, shoot, if, if Medicare would have been different, I might not have ever even gone. You didn't just show up? No, you, uh, kind of. <laughs> well, who did who hired you then? Dan hit in the in the price guide area, but I sent my resume to Louise. Okay. And Louise took it up there and was like, yeah. I was like, Do you remember me? She's like, Absolutely, I remember you. Yeah. And then she took it up and was like, Man, you guys gotta hire this guy. And well, and the, story goes, did, the story goes that I, I was very confident in myself. <laughs> and, and Dan didn't want to hire me, but Rob Springs was like, dude, this guy's got it. Yeah. Because we didn't need the guy. Yeah, we basically, I mean, I, my philosophy, which I tried to pass down was, you know, get the best athlete available. And so I don't know if you were the best hockey price guide editor, but I think you had a lot of talent, a lot of ability in a lot of areas. And that versatility served you well. So I mean, you did a yeah, bunch yeah. of I mean, I actually, I actually had hockey, but I started or didn't start. I picked up the uh, starting lineups because right. it, it was actually sitting on the, the editing floor, basically, and nobody was pricing it. And I was like, dude, I know starting lineups. And I did. And I actually was was into starting lineups. So I picked that up and and started editing that. And that's actually how I started to become an editor was doing that. Yeah. And then they saw that I could do that. And then they made I, within a year, I was a hockey price guide editor. And Bill Sutherland was actually was doing it. And I took it over from him and they moved Bill to another area. And so I became editor of the hockey magazine in the starting lineups. And I worked on basketball. Yeah. Now, Bill was an amazing chess player. I think he always had his next move. Uh, lined up yeah. and so you were his not victim but I mean he probably had you earmarked so that he could uh, do something different but being the hockey editors not an easy job from Dallas Texas oh it, it was you know we, we had Al Muir was the editor of the magazine and he was I mean he was awesome I mean he was he totally got it yeah yeah he was great so between me and him we we were good I mean we we nailed that magazine and and then yeah I mean I just chipped in where I could yeah and I would tell you that I would never in a million years think that I'd be sitting here talking to you on, and you'd have me as a guest. I'm, I'm incredibly blessed. And I never thought that I would, that, that's, this is a career bucket list thing for me. <laughs> well, I told my wife, I'm doing a thousand episodes. You're, you're uh, th th that's faint praise to say you're in my top thousand. But like I said, you got two cards in the wall of fame out of a yeah. thousand. So, uh, and I've got another, I've got, I've got a bunch of your other compatriots over at Panini that I've still got yeah. Interview, but I don't want to. I don't want to make it the the sports card insights by Panini <laughs> with every episode being a Panini guy. Well, uh, Tracy, you know, Tracy, he said he said of all the people that I know 
would be entertaining. He said I would. <laughs> well, he recommended me, so uh, I, uh, I knew that. Well, I wouldn't recommend too many other people over there, but there's <laughs> uh, a bunch of. Well, I mean, I'm just gonna go around, and I, like I said, it's fun to to draw out you know other stories that I hadn't thought about super fan in a long time. Yeah, and you know that was uh, that was an interesting yeah, chapter. I'm going group. up Louise Bird and and Louise as well. Yeah, so that's. Yeah. That'll be, that'll be, uh, that'll be good. At any rate, uh, you got to get back to work, I guess. No, man, this is my work. Come on, and man. You're on the clock. <laughs> I am too. Clock. I am too. There you go. Well, thanks, Scott. Well, we may do it again if you get another idea for something to talk about. Like I said, I really, I'm trying to create kind of some oral history yeah. for the hobby. And obviously yeah. there's, you know, some of the episodes are about stuff from 30 or 40 years ago, but some of them are from 10 years ago and some of them are from yesterday. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's. I mean, one of the things about me, and it, it was why they took me to Italy as the first time or one of the one of the three people that went is that I know I know probably about as much as anybody about that company I mean yeah I just have the ability to I don't know I mean like I became friends with you I became friends with Mark Harwell I became friends with Ann I'm friends with you know our CEO I mean I just I'm one of those guys you can go to that if you need something and so like I've just I know I have stories. I know a lot. I mean, people tell me I should write a book and I'm like, nah, I don't. <laughs> people said I should write a book and this is what I'm doing instead. So at the go. end of uh, three or four years, I'll have a thousand episodes and I'll have interviewed everybody I want to interview and, and, uh, you know, the good back and forth. Thanks for doing the dueling questions. That's kind of fun because you don't know how it's going to turn out. So, yeah, yeah. but I'll do, I'll... No, I didn't know. I mean, I, 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 uh, I pulled it out of you. One of the, one of the things, but uh, you know, I, I always like to, to, you know, like to find out what people think is really cool. Like, like one of like me personally, my probably my most prized possession is when we we were doing an extra edition, elite extra edition was the first year that we did it, and man, it was dying. Like we didn't have enough personnel to to, to get the set done, so they came to me and they're like, "Can you fill the set out?" And I'm like, "Me?" I'm like, "Yeah." They're like, "You know all the people, get it done. Just I don't care who's in the set, just get it out the door." So I was like, "Okay." So I started calling college coaches, <laughs> doing deals with college coaches to fill out the set, and I'm a Nebraska diehard and. I did a deal with Tom Osborne and he actually wrote me a handwritten letter that was just like, thank you so much for doing the deal. I appreciate, you know, thank you, blah, 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 blah. And it came in Nebraska, you know, uh, Nebraska Cornhusker letterhead and on letterhead and all that in the envelope. And I'm just, I have that sitting right here. And I'm like, man, that that's is my prized possession. Definitely a keeper. He, he's a class guy anyway. Yeah, that's he's the, my hero. And 